I was watching today, I had bet him to um, score over 20 points. He got 18. I'm like, dude, this is like the easiest game to get 20 points because DeMar isn't there. So many injuries. Like, how do you end up with just 18 points? Like, if you're an all-star, you you need to get to you need to get to fucking 20 points at least. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Shoot Your Shot Sports Talk Show. I'm Richie Chicago. I'm your host today for the show. So this is the inaugural show. Let's kick it off to Nick Johnston over here. He's going to talk about the Sox. All right, guys, before we get into this, this is sponsored by Bet Rivers. Bet Rivers Sportsbook offers promotions throughout the whole week and has daily odds boosts called house specials for both new and existing users. So, I got a special for you guys, and new users only receive a bonus bet up to $500, so a second chance bet. If you lose, you get the money back, and you have to bet again. So, if you want to try, try it out, go check out the um, QR code at the bottom of the screen over here, and yeah, let's bet, because I like the sports bet, and you can tell my bets. So... Check out Bet River Sportsbook. That's my sportsbook. That's our sportsbook for the Shoot Shot Sports Network. Um, also, if you have a gambling problem, call 1 800 Gambler for crisis and counseling services. What's up, Nick? How's it going? How we doing? How we doing? Pretty, doing pretty good today. Cool, cool. Uh, he's part of the Shoot Shot Sports Network, and he has a show, No Substitute for Sports, comes out every Wednesday, correct? Uh, I do what well, we do Tuesday night comes out Tuesday night, but I usually like push it out and promote it come come Wednesday. So, so if you catch it on the, you know, the Tuesday 10 p.m. Central time usual drop or 12, then there you go. Maybe your lucky duck get there early. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, Tuesdays Wednesdays is usually the usually the drop time. Perfect. And then uh, YouTube links down below. I'm gonna put a link down here so they can follow and subscribe. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. So tell me about the White Sox. What's going on? I know we just ended, Super Bowl just ended, so we're just transitioning into, like, baseball, and let's see what's up. Yeah, I know. I was making a, making a snail's pace transition from football shows and podcasts to, like, NBA and then White Sox podcasts. It's kind of crazy that the NBA is 60 games into the season, and I just don't care, simply don't care. Hopefully, other maybe other Bulls fans same, share the same feeling. But, you know, besides that, I'm, you know, I'm here to talk White Sox. I'm here to, I want to stay on subject, obviously. Overall, you know, want to get like the fan morale and spring training going and, you know, headlines and stuff like that. So, yeah, I can just plow, plow through it. And, and I mean, feel free to throw in any other questions that, I mean, that are like range, ranging around. I know you're more of the Cub guys, so I, I'm, I'm sure you got maybe got a couple in there. So, yeah, uh, I guess we'll start off with uh, the Fan Fest being canceled. That was, you know, it was, that was a tough one. It was overall just a season ending, ending in the wet fart fashion that it did pile on top of it uh white Sox front office went ahead and decided yeah we don't need fan fest so uh the fans just i guess for lack of a better word they were pissed off they rightfully so you know that's just for fans it's a good interaction you get to go there you see all the new guys get some get some fun and make you know the little kids can get autographs and pictures and all that fun stuff but I, would, I would also think it's fun for the you know fun for the players and the organization can't make the excuse that, oh, it was COVID or something like that because other other teams, including the Cubs, were doing their fan fest and all that fun stuff. I'm sure that, that was actually good on your end. So bad look for the for the White Sox. And like I said, even even more piling on top of it that they thought they were sneaky, throwing it in during the holiday season, thinking that it would fall into the new shuffle. Uh, but no, uh, we, we saw that. We saw that. And like, like I said, rightfully so. We were uh, we were pissed off. But don't worry. Uh, no fan fest, but the White Sox garage sale is going to be going on May 6th. So make sure to buy all their all their cheap garbage. Make sure to get a Dallas Keuchel jersey for 60 cents coming, uh, like I said, May 6th if you're if you're available for a for a garage sale. Uh, let me see. Overall fan tone. Uh, it's, it's low. Morale is low. I'm reading articles, Twitter posts. I'm in a White Sox pride and passion page on on Facebook and uh, optimism it's always low in that fan page. They're always just bitching and moaning, but uh, <laughs> overall, just it's, it's almost non-existent. Just, just want to, you know, if, if it starts out good, 
I'm sure fans will show up and, sh- and, and support, but overall we just didn't get anything in return besides, you know, Ben and good signing and Mike Clevenger. We'll get to Mike Clevenger in a little bit. Uh, you know, White Sox kind of sat on their hands, didn't really do anything. Uh, the Trey Turners of the off season went and, you know, we thought we were going to open up the play, uh, open up the, 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 the excuse me, the, the pocketbook, nothing, uh, nothing there. Maybe we can get a familiar face like Carlos Rodon. Nope. He's back. He's over in New York now, even an inexpensive name like Josh Bell, our hit and lefty, a guy, something, a, a position that we need, uh, well, we'll see him, but 13 times a year in a Guardians jersey, they were able to scoop him up on the other side. Uh, so I'm great. You know, I'll, I'll be, I'll take it this way. I'm grateful for Benintendi. I think he'll do very well. I think he'll do great. I think he'll do uh, take some relief off of Eloy on the defensive side. Eloy says he wants to go out there and play. Uh, I, I think he should focus on just absolutely crushing and destroying baseballs, uh, sending 450 foot home runs over the fence. That'd be that'd be awesome to see. Uh, you know, overall guardians, I think they're the favorites as of right now to win the division. I don't know, really know what that tells me. Vegas is kind of heads or tails with this division. Uh, but you know, like I said, if, the, if they start off hot, which is kind of on the downtrend, not, not looking so good. They, I think they open up with a four game series against, against the Houston Astros. It looks brutal. It looks bleak. But if we start off hot, stand, stay healthy. That's the key word, staying healthy hopefully we can pull off something maybe hopefully again pull get a full season out of Luis Robert haven't been able to do that since his since his time and tenure here excuse me Luis Robert Jr he just recently changed his name adding the junior part so there goes my Luis Robert Southside jersey having any relevance this year I don't have to go buy drop another $150 on another jersey uh so there's that Again, I mean, there's that a Bray use comments that wasn't sitting that probably didn't sit too well with other people, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't really get into that. Uh, yeah, I guess just overall, fans are either upset or they're staying hopeful. I'm somewhere in between. It's gonna take a lot, and then you know, we'll look at spring training. Just recently today, I believe, uh, pitchers and catchers reporting. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. But the big hoopla and hullabaloo and everyone, howdy do uh, questions are what's up with Mike Clevenger? Uh, he was there for comment. He wasn't you know, he hasn't been charged with anything with his domestic abuse allegations as of right now that he's dealing with uh, the White Sox. It's kind of out of their hands as of right now. It's completely up to the league. And it's kind of unfortunate that that's just a dark cloud kind of lingering over things. And in that in that same sense, like we don't really have the White Sox don't have any control over it. So, like I said, he, he's there, he's working out, he's doing what he can, but a suspension can still come down at any point in time, which sucks. Uh, but Clevenger spoke, and he sounded confident that he would be completely exonerated of everything that's been going on. Just, but overall, it's still a distraction in the clubhouse, so that sucks. He, he even made mention of that in his interview, that for some players in this in this ball club, it's their first time meeting him and having this first uh, – this first encounter, like, hey, I'm sorry, you got to deal with answering all this BS about my domestic abuse thing. And like I said, that was the main focus about what everyone was, everyone was questioned between teammates and Rick Hahn. Uh, It was, it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for, for a reason, obviously. So got to talk about it. I'm sure, hopefully, if Clevenger is that, is that positive, I can only take his word for it. Again, being a man as a, and a fan, I can only take his word that he truly does love and take and want to take care of his children. Uh, like I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, the fan side of me will focus on the numbers, I suppose, until then. And I guess he'll fight, figure out all, all his personal stuff. Talent-wise, went 7-7 seven seven last year with a 4.33 ERA. We need to figure that out, get that get that bo- boosted up. Otherwise, in my mind, uh, he might be, he could be justifiably DFA'd probably by like late July or something like that. Either way, White Sox overall, if they want to start off with a hot start, like I made mention to, we need someone in that ball club that, it is, needs to play with their hair on fire in that sort of sense. And that needs to be Tim Anderson or some guy, some young guy like that. And there needs to be a guy like that in the bullpen. Maybe that could be Joe Kelly. Uh, you know, I'll quickly tangent on that. Uh, some reports about Liam Hendricks, just, just, just talking about the bullpen in general. You know, he was recently diagnosed with cancer, very unfortunate. But he actually was in, in, in report and uh, being seen around uh, besides his treatment. He was actually being seen throwing baseball. So that's good. Same positive he's staying in shape down in glendale arizona so that's awesome to see you know cancer is obviously a physical toll that 
people have to deal with. But when you have a positive mindset, I'm sure that, that it counters it and it can it can do amazing things. So again, just good to see him in pot in a positive mindset and good spirits down there. So that's awesome to see. Uh, in terms of who might step up in that closing role, might be Kendall Graveman. Uh, he had a few save opportunities last year, and he actually came through, so that's pretty good. Another name that's being thrown around is Ronaldo Lopez. I'll also consider him not the worst idea. Only one home run given up last season in 61 games, and he countered it with 63 strikeouts, so that's pretty awesome on, on that as well. Uh, I'll just blow through a couple through other names. Uh, Garrett Crochet, uh, he had Tommy John, John surgery. Earlier last earlier last year, hopefully he can be above uh, uh, above schedule and get there and be here by mid season. Let me see, Moncada and Lynn, uh, they were there. They were seen uh, runner doing some BP practice and everything. Otherwise, because they're gonna, they're going to be the World Baseball Classic representing uh, the United States and I believe. Oh, oh God! It's not, I, 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 in turn, just so I don't offend anybody, I don't want to, <laughs> probably Cuba or something. Oh, like that. Yeah. Otherwise, that uh, it, I guess the one big thing just surrounding not only just the White Sox is just how this pitch timer is going to be affecting everyone, and uh, I don't know any more off the top of my head that really had a big deal with it. Just uh, in terms of like who was averaging above pitches in between the delivery Giolito was very on the slower side almost 30 seconds in between pitches so he's gonna have to cut that down significantly and you know it'll be missed because Liam Hendricks will be dealing with this but no possible flip outs from him on this on this side but I'll I'll turn if there's a sports book option for who can be ejected because of a pitch timer I'm laying my money on Lance Lynn this year I'm pretty sure we'll get some We'll get some motherfucks. We'll get some, <laughs> we'll get some swears out of him. I'm sure we'll get some sort of ejection out of him. So either way, uh, like I said, overall, I, I want to be positive. I, I really want to be again. Again, looking at it, if they're second in the in the in the AL division, the Central to win it as of right now, it's possible. But I mean, we got some tough, tough competition ahead of us. So yeah, yeah. that's that's basically the rundown on the White Sox as of right now. I don't want to ex- I don't want to exhaust all of my talking points just yet. I know you're gonna have have me on here hopefully a couple more times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna ask real quick. Do you think the window is closed for the Sox or? Is there like a little like chance for it to be open? Like I feel like the Sox had their chance like 2020, 2021. It's feel like it's been diminishing like ever since. What what's your take on that? Oof. I mean, I believe the sports books might have us only winning like 74, 75 games this year. I would hope that's some sort of uh spark of just hey, some like some some you know heat, some air added fire to these guys to get them competitive and get them in there. Uh, I, I hope they can do something. I, I don't think the, 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 uh, the room, I'm, I'm trying, I'm sorry. I'm trying to trying to get this all together. The opportunity is there. The time to, to actually execute is now there's no, there's no more like, Oh, he's like getting his groove or like, Oh, uh, grand doll is just getting a groove or Mancada. No, these guys need to show up be healthy and execute. And it's simply that if, if, if there's that, not that, uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough road. It's going to be a very tough road. I mean, that's, that's probably what maybe the big argument was for people. They're just like, Oh, why are we going to add pieces? If they're just the guys that we already have aren't executing and there's on paper, like we're a top tier talent. I mean, uh, even, even still losing a Bray, you, we got Andrew Vaughn stepping in. He's going to probably do fantastic. He's been groomed into this position, ready to go, uh, tied, tied this, with the same amount of home runs as a Bray last year. Uh, Tim Anderson has been leading the league and hitting for the last three years, if I'm not mistaken, you know, pending a couple injuries and some baby mommy j- drama, but, uh, you know, it's, this team is here. We can make some noise. Uh, this this new coach or this new new manager, excuse me, I think he can he can make some noise as well. He's he, he's there. He's not going to be sleeping in the dugout like Tony La Russa. So who's the new let's, uh, let's do it. manager? Let's do it. I oh God, I, again, I, I'm, I, names I know, are, I know. I'm the worst with names. I got cousins and aunts. I still don't know their names fully, and I've been I'm 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 25 years old. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I it's mean, uh, yeah. Again, he uh, coming from the Kansas City Royals organization, I can tell you that much. I mean, he was greeted with he had a big YouTube uh, thing on it on the White Sox page. So they they took him around the city. They introduced him all nice at a big press conference. So they they got it, it's it's looking good. They didn't they didn't screw nobody over. So it's looking good. Cool, uh, cool. Yeah, just, I want awesome, positivity. Man. Yeah, I'm just looking for positivity. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for this White Sox recap. Again, you can catch Nick 
at uh, No Substitute for Sports. No Substitute for Sports yeah. on you know, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, whatever you want to do. If you're bored, check us out. We do everything from uh, overall Chicago recaps to the big juicy headlines. And then, you know, I sprinkle in some wrestling and some movies and some pop culture. I Me, mean, we do everything. We do everything over there. So check us out. Pretty nice over on the YouTubes. Oh, yeah. yeah like I said, you'll, you'll have everything in the description. It'll be awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. So 23 baseball season has begun. Pitchers catch report was earlier this week. Uh, we have some renewed sense of optimism, maybe. Whole new roster. Uh, it's going to be weird because uh, we don't have Wilson Contreras and all that. But we do have Big Car Chicago. Over here to my right, we're going to talk about the Cubs, and we'll, we'll see what happens with that. So how do you feel about the season so far? Not so far, but like preview, I guess. What's your take on um, it so far? I, I got optimism. You know, they uh, – you know, they made – you know, we'll see. You know, Bellinger is kind of a big if. Yeah, I mean, but you never know. Sometimes a change of scenery – you know, set the guy off in a, in another, in a comeback year or, you know, but picking up Hosmer and uh, Mancini, you know, that's a good, uh, that's a good pickup right there. Yeah. Um, and Dansby Swanson, we got him Dansby too. Dansby is a huge pickup. Yeah. And, you know, and then you got to look like C- Christopher Morrell. That was a big surprise last year. Yeah. Um, And then you look at the other future, like they got coming up. They, they got a lot of young talent coming up. And um, sorry, this is it's snowing outside, and uh, no I think the sensors got a little s- snow on them, setting them off, or it's a ghost. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think you know they got a lot of young talent to come up, and hopefully you see, start seeing those guys come up, and you know they, they look good. It was very promising. I, I do believe they'll finish at least. Uh, at least third. And you know what? Never know. Nice. A shocking second, too. You never know. Yeah, I actually haven't projected going third as well. Uh, and Bat Rivers actually has their win total amount at over under 78.5 wins. So, oh, wow. I know. I, and I guess the um, – what was I going to say? The favorite number is under. So Is it really? Under 78? Yeah. That's – it's a pretty high total. I don't. I forgot what they finished with last year. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I kind of like wrote them off last year. I'm like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but somebody. I mean, I mean, I'll just on a. Uh, I was just talking to Nick earlier about the Sox, and he's projecting around like 70 wins too. So like, wow. It's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be tough for like Chicago. I feel like in general. <laughs> yeah, I feel um, like that's just the Chicago way. Is uh. Um, just our sports never, uh, <laughs> we just can't get it. Like we can't we have a yeah. good brief run and then that's it. It's not we get, we get like you, excited like, for the hype basically. Yeah. Excited for the hype. And then you don't have the consistency. Like you get out of like New York and uh, Los Angeles teams and other big market city teams, Philadelphia for another example. But Philadelphia, I mean, like, they're like in a hell right now, dude. Like, they make it literally to the finals, but they just don't make it. Don't like, finish, they don't win. No, yeah. Like in three different but, sports. It, yeah, but I mean, hey, but think about that: three different sports all at once, going. You know? No, I know. And the economy, they're like booming. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like Chicago's a big sports market city. It 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 should do. All the teams should be doing good, you know, equally. It's good for the city, good for the fans. Yeah, totally. But, they, uh, you know, they don't care they're getting their money. No, I know. And it's crazy because the Cubs are plus 300 to make the playoffs this year. So, wow. I mean, that's not bad. No, it's not. No, I, don't, I thought it would be a, more of a long shot. So, like, it, oh, for sure. it looks more prompting than I thought it would be. Because like last year we didn't have anyone. We all we had Wilson Contreras and like yeah. I don't know if we do we have Frank. No, we don't have Frank Schwindel anymore, do we? We, we traded no, him away, they, right? Yeah, I don't. I think they released them. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. I mean, we got like some big names. Well, you got, 
and you got two first base, two big first basemen right now. Plus, they have, uh, I believe, they have a rookie or not a rookie yet, but a kid in the farm system. I think they got from Atlanta in a trade for Jack Peterson. He was supposed to be a good first baseman, but I th- and they got another guy, Brennan D- Davis, but I think he may be an outfielder. Yeah, outfielders, yeah. Outfielders can convert to first baseman easy. Definitely. Our pitching looks pretty good too. We have Marcus Stroman, Jameson Tallon. Uh, they're they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, and then Keegan Thompson, Hayden Wisinski, and Caleb Killian. So they look like pretty integral pieces. I think we can pitch this year. So yeah, I'm about they, that. They got some depth too, which is good. And they yeah. just picked up that other uh, reliever the other day. That's right. Yeah, I forgot uh, his name. Yeah, I mean, it's blanking on me. I'm still transitioning. Uh, I know, right? It's yeah, the sports transition mode right now. Yeah, so like I really, I'm really bad with names. It, <laughs> so it, it's yeah. just like, yeah, I I didn't even know like the Sox had a new coach talking about Sox last like the last segment. I'm like, oh man, and we, we both didn't even know the coach's name, so that was it was that bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, oh, I, I know. know he's. I know he's uh, he's the bench coach from uh, Kansas City. Yep, as much yep, as I, was, I, I know, I remember. That's all we knew. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to have you here, I'll, we'll just quickly recap Bulls and Bears since I got you online. So super quick. Yeah. Um, the Bears are moving to Arlington, I guess, just because uh, the Bears bought the rights to Arlington. So that's interesting. Do you think we're moving to Arlington? That is that what it means? Do you think? I I, I think that's our uh, conf- confirmation there that we'll be uh we'll be going there. Bears will be going there for sure. Cool, cool. That's interesting. I wonder how long it's gonna take for that because they still gotta build a thing and all that. So yeah, that's Oof. probably gonna be uh it's gonna be a, a, a probably a long project there. Yeah. Uh. And it's gonna be interesting because the Bears are their first round pick. This year, this upcoming year, so Bears are on the clock now. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. Uh, and then the Bulls, they fucking stink. I'm so fucking pissed. I went to the Bulls game Monday, just off the whim, just to see how they're doing. Not good. We lost against the Pacers. No, no, wait, no. We lost against the Magic. Then the next night, we lost against the Pacers. And then on Thursday, which is tonight, we're recording. We lost against the Bucks. It's just not good. We're not doing good at all. Like there, yeah. It's yeah. It's it's unfortunate, and I think the injuries are just. I think that's a big key. With now Demar Caruso, you know you're still missing Javante Green as well. You know Lonzo Ball. I mean, it's yeah. It's bad. And we didn't do anything for trade deadline. Like it's not looking good at it's, all. Yeah, it's no. I mean, and then now I saw something. That, again, you see blips. You don't know how true it is, but one was Vooch might be interested in testing free agency come off season. Oh it's no, like, dude! Yeah, and it's like, oh man, we're gonna start this again now. <laughs> it's literally like once we think we have a good team, then it's gonna blow it up again, just like the yeah. Dwayne Wade, Jimmy Butler. <laughs> yeah, like, that, that was so dope. But it was Rose, a little too old. Yeah. But like that was that was good. That was cool. <laughs> just got, we just got to wait and wait a little too late. Yeah, it's a little too late. But like, I, I feel like with Zach Levine now, that's because like he got the bag, and now he just kind of just cruising along. Like, yeah, I, I don't think he's worth the money anymore. But we paid him. It feels like buyer's remorse almost. I feel like that. Too. Um, you, were hoping to, you were hoping Zach was going to turn out to be that Demar Derozan level, that closer. No, to the game. I know. And you know, I forgot what game I was watching. It was a, about a week ago, but what? And no, Demar. And it was Zach was, and the Bulls were up. They were winning. Yeah. And Zach was trying to close out the game, and it's just like not hitting the fourth quarter shot. You know, the clutch shot when you need it. Whereas you got yeah. Demar on the other hand, where he's almost a guarantee to make that shot. Yeah, yeah. And then, like I was watching today, I had bet him to. Um, score over 20 points, he got 18. I'm like, dude, this is like the easiest game to get 20 points because DeMar isn't there, so many injuries. Like, how do you end up with just 18 points? Like, if you're an all-star, you you need to get to 
you need to get to fucking 20 points at least like yeah you're av- it was just you're bad av- like if you're if you're an also you should you should be averaging at least if you're not a su- super supreme defensive guy you're averaging i think 20 points or better a game easy he doesn't pass you know? but he was passing this game i'm like what the fuck are you doing passing dude like it's fucking drive to the hoop he was fucking yeah. shooting threes like a fucking scumbag. Like, God damn it, dude. Like, I don't well, – first, I need, like, you to score 20 points. Just drive to the hoop. You'll get fouled. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, hey, you, get- you want to be shooting threes. Like, yeah, you're down by a lot, but don't try to be a hero. You, you lost already. Like, just drive to the hoop, dude. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, you, no, you, you're not known to, like, shoot threes. You're known to fucking drive. Like, that's what we got yeah. you to fucking – well, I know you're older now, but still. Like – just fucking dunk the baller, like do whatever you do. Exactly, it fucking sucks. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm so fed up with the Bulls. I'm so fucking fed up with the Bulls. I, yeah. I like had a meltdown the other day. Dude, I was so pissed. Like, how the fuck do you lose against the Orlando? They don't have. I know. No, I know. Orlando. And then yesterday Pacers. we lost against the Pacers. We had a 24 point lead. Like I wasn't watching the game because I was out at a concert, but like. I thought we had in the bag, and then the next thing I know, we lost. I'm like, yeah. what? How'd we lose? We lost by four points. We were up by 24. That's yeah. that's insane. And Zach's leading the team because the road is out. So that's how I know. Like, Zach's just on, like, cruise control mode. So, yeah. yeah. There's, there's no – that that extra that extra drive is, is not there, you know? Yeah, and the – it felt like they're on senioritis. Like they need this off star break to come. Now it's here, but like it took forever. Like they were just struggling. Like it was a struggle bus. Like it's like the biggest hangover ever. That's what it looked yeah. like for me, at least. Like they couldn't yeah. just oh, yeah. snap out of it. No, it's like yeah, you're right. Like they need the all star break right now. And I, I was getting that vibe too. I think when they lost like three or four in a row, I'm like, they need this. I'm like, they need the break. They need the break for sure. Yeah. Man, all right. Well, thanks again for coming on. Uh, we'll we'll talk next week. Well, not me and you, but I mean, well, you can come on. I see, I don't care, but you know yeah, what I mean. <laughs> yeah, let me know. Yeah, hey, yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, cool, yeah. man. Don't mind me driving in the snow over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you like stopped, whatever, because I didn't really get it like an accident, or whatever. That's all right. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you.